What's up, everybody? This is the D Occulting Yoga Podcast, Episode 1. I'm your host, Ian Katnak. In the future, we will have some guests. But for today, it's just me. A lot of guests, I'm sure, will be scared off because just like you, when you heard the, saw the word occult, you thought that I was going to be doing a headstand while sacrificing a chicken and a hamster. There was going to be a huge occult ritual, maybe a tantric ritual, but I'm sorry. That isn't what we're here for today. This podcast is going to be here to discuss human consciousness, yoga philosophy, mind control issues, and yoga You know, on all levels natural law and truth the occult cults inside of yoga and how all that gets created and all the issues that affect the yoga community i'm here to offer legitimate solutions to the bs new cage movement and all the crap we get from these so-called gurus first of all i'd like to say that i do respect yoga i love yoga i practice every day asana pranayama meditation however I see a lot of problems in the community that we're being controlled by words and these belief systems that do not empower us. I can see that because there are no results happening in yoga right now in the actual real world. A lot of people are finding happiness and self-enlightenment, but the the pinnacle of that is you get to go live in Bali and have your retreat and you teach people how to dance around. What about the world what about helping others that doesn't seem to be a very big issue in yoga right now even though we have the strongest personal development system in the world in terms of body breath and mind nothing is better than the yogic system however we've been labeled and subver- with subversive words and phrases that make us not care about objective truths one of those is about the word occult. This is the de occulting podcast, so why don't we start with the word occult? I'm going to discuss the definition of a lot of words on this podcast. So, occult comes from the Latin word occultare, which means to hide. So, simply, it means that which is hidden from sight. However, if you ask, if you thought what the word occult is, or if you go, just go ask some of your friends what they think the occult is, and just say, you know, say a word or two back at me when I say this word. I guarantee you, everyone I've ever asked says evil, sinister, bad, unless they were educated in these things. And even if they are, they usually think it's that, but it's that which is hidden from sight. And there's a lot of occulting going on in yoga right now that you have to do this, this, and that, and you have to get authorized. You have to do to go to this school if you want to know this information. And in yoga, we're controlled with words, as with everything else. In this world, we have advertisement and all these things. So... Today I'd like to discuss the biggest and most dangerous lie in yoga and in the whole world. But first we're going to have to make a few definitions and we're going to have to talk about truth. In the yoga community I don't see very many truth seekers. Oh what? What did I just say? No truth seekers? Oh I'm sure you're just like I'm a truth seeker blah blah blah. However. Are you looking at the causal factors all the way down the chain of events to figure out what is actually going on? Because what is truth? What's the definition of truth? Truth, that which has undergone the process of actually occurring, that which is. We can understand these events. These events are not subjective. The truth I'm going to be talking about isn't the omnipotent God type truth. That's for other podcasts and different discussions. However, when you ask yogis, especially in the yoga community, in the New Age, New Cage community, if they believe in absolute truths, uh, the majority of the time I hear no, which is the most scary thing. And as a spoiler alert, that's the most dangerous lie. Because there are things, though, I'm going to make a statement right now that humanity can only experience suffering when we don't have the truth. To support this, I'm going to talk, I'm going to quote Soren Kierkegaard, who's an amazing philosopher, German philosopher. He wrote a pretty cool book called Diary of a Seducer. That's a fiction work, and then also some great philosophical works. Check those out if you're into that type of thing. So, quote, there are two ways to be fooled. One is to believe what isn't true. 
The other is to refuse to believe what is true. Okay, let's dissect that a little bit. One is to believe what isn't true. We see that all the time in yoga with this subjective nature that we believe what isn't true because we're still suffering, are we not? Isn't there still suffering? There's still lapses of truth. The, part two is the other is to refuse to believe what is true. Also another prevalent thing. And this happens because gurus and others manipulate and deceive our perception of truth so they can take away our so we give them our personal responsibility. And then they we get stuck under this illusion, under these lies, these really big lies that they tell us. Because let's quote the biggest liar of them all, Adolf Hitler. Quote, make it big simple keep saying it and eventually the people will believe it vague general things are great and they're especially great for empathetic yogis there's so much empathy in yoga every, every yoga everyone's so emotional so open that's how we got into yoga in the first place right quoting once again hitler's right hand man in marketing and propaganda joseph goebbels quote the bigger the lie the more it will be believed the biggest lie of all in yoga is that one of them, which I'm going to discuss a little bit more next week, this is the second biggest lie, is that there is an awakening happening right now, that there's the indigo children, we're all awakening, but just because you are aware that we're sick and the society's sick doesn't mean that you are awake. Looking at the causal factors and understanding that and eradicating those things is when an awakening is actually going to happen. And I'm not seeing that at all. Go look at the world. The levels of control are getting deeper and deeper. That's for next week. However, that's going to lead in to, once again, another quote from the Oracle of Delphi. At the gates of the Oracle of Delphi, which is a secret society back, you know, in, in Sparta and in um, Greece, that, quote, heed these words, "Thee who wish to probe the depths of nature... If you do not find within yourself that which you seek, neither will you find it outside of yourself. If you ignore the wonders of your own house, how do you expect to find other wonders? In you is hidden the treasure of treasures. Know thyself and you will know the universes and the gods. Know thyself and you will know the universes and the gods. Core truths of life start in a fractal nature such as Natural law, do no harm, the golden the golden the golden law. That's the golden truth. They start as a hologram. And we know when we are talking about holograms is that when you cut a hologram in half, you get another hologram. Maybe the resolution gets lower, but you keep getting full images. When you understand individual elements, you understand all of nature. When you understand the individual truths, you understand all of nature. However, if one of the levels is flawed, then the whole hologram isn't correct. So if you have the highest level of truth, then everything else is just being cut, and it's also true. So if you don't believe me that you're not a truth seeker, and that people aren't seeking truth in, in the yoga community, let me ask you a question. We'll do two different layers. What, what do you value most in life, and what do you value most in yoga? Let's sit and think about that for a second. Maybe write it down. Just think of a few things in your head. So what did you guys say? Family, love, friendships, marriage, your dogs, your job, your lifestyle, helping others, teaching yoga, helping others get over their emotional problems, blah, blah, blah. Okay. How many of you guys said truth? Maybe you guys got the hints before and maybe slipped truth in there. But go ask very spiritual people you know that question. I've asked a lot of people and I've never heard the word truth. What? How is that? Okay, how can we live in a society and be truth seekers when no one actually cares about seeking the reality of what's actually occurring? Because we have to accept the responsibility of truth once we accept that. We have to respect ourselves to understand and acknowledge truth. Respect in Latin. Spectare, spectacles, means to look. Re means again. So respect really means to look again. 
it's not about salute or you know bowing down to a guru type of respect it's just to look again at the situation so if you look again at someone who is willfully ignorant someone who's ignoring which ignorance is ignoring what's happening there's a difference between ignorance and nescience is ignorant is knowing and ignoring and nescience is just you never heard of it you have no idea if you don't respect yourself if you don't have a whole hologram if you have any lapses in the hologram and your truth isn't real if you don't acknowledge everything that's going on then you will never actually love yourself if you think that is a controversial statement, once again, I ask you, what is actually being done in yoga? Let's look at the yoga community, such a powerful community with so many great things. There's nothing happening. Facebook posts about Donald Trump are not doing anything. Those aren't causal factors. That's a Band-Aid. That's a wound. That's like putting a Band-Aid if we fix that. Or Hillary Clinton or anybody. This isn't about politics. This is about why, 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 why. Let's get six or seven levels deeper. Why did we do this? Why did we elect Donald Trump? Why did the people think that it was okay? Why did... What brought the conservative values? What, or blah, blah, blah. And if we really look down deeper and deeper, we start to see that a lot of these choices weren't made by us, they were made for us. Also, in yoga, that's true too. It, a lot of people don't believe that there's actual truth and that we can find truth and that truth exists because we see that all the time with this ego dissolvement BS. Yes, we should dissolve the bad parts of us that. See, me, 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 and, and do go after all these dumb things like money, wealth, and fame. However, but when we dissolve the ego in this way, we lose things like courage and character and the great things also that we should judge people by. I do judge people on their character and their courage and what they actually do in life. Why wouldn't I? Because at some level, we all do on the physical level. We can say that we don't, and if you don't, then you've dissolved the ego too much. And that's what I see in yoga, that... We have all these enlightened people. Wow, you're so enlightened, sir, but are you actually doing something for the world? Or are you playing into this consumerism and subversive control system? Because just hanging out on the wayside and, and leaving the situation is not okay. I'll just say that right now. I'm not trying to ride off into the sunset and live in a temple and be a monk. That's not doing anything for anybody. That's not. That's what is going on in yoga, though, that... There is a whole machine out there of problems that we don't want to fight against, right? That they're advertising. I live in Las Vegas. Look at the casinos. They keep turning. They keep being, getting bigger. They keep employing my friends who keep showing up every day. And every, every, every system, a lot of these terrible things keep happening every day and they get stronger and stronger in our community is just staying very stagnant. Maybe we're getting more people, but like I said, what about these events? There's some event in Las Vegas every year, a yoga festival. We just learn yoga and hang out. There's like no community action. There's no saying like, hey, we should meditate and like learn truth. We should actually figure out what's occurring. We should de-occult this world. That's not going on. And this leads in to the biggest and most dangerous lie in yoga. Oh, you may think I'm BSing. You may think I'm playing this up. Oh, you saw that in the title. But no, the most dangerous lie in the world is something called solipsism. Maybe some of you have heard about that. I'm going to talk about that right now. We're going to talk about the tenets of solipsism, which is an ideology. Number one, there is no reality. The only reality you know is this reality, and, and that's it. There is no truth. There's no such thing as knowledge, and you can't understand anything in, the, in fullness. So there is no truth, right? There's only subjective truth. Even if you do know truth, if you find some truth in yourself, you'll never be able to explain it to someone else. That's tenant number three. So we see, I see this everywhere in yoga. This is yoga right now, especially the new cage movement. I see this everywhere that people tell me, no, it's all subject. No, it's all subjective. Don't judge others. You don't know what they're going through, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, wait, then do I not have an object? Is there not a right and a wrong? Did they not do something wrong? Is there no right and wrong? Is it just all a game? And if you don't believe me that this is bad, one, look at Satanism. Satanism in the Satanic Bible by Anton LaVey, the second tenet, the second rule of being a Satanist is you can't be a solipsist because you can't get anything done. It's the most poison thing. Because the, something that's very interesting is that Satanists 
are tapping into the same energy as people who believe in God are. That's the same thing with sorcerers and magicians, light workers and dark workers, and that's what differentiates us. I'm a light worker from the normal people. That we focus our thoughts, emotions, and actions on something, and then there's a moral choice. Is it, is it for the people or is it for myself? And in yoga, there's two distinctions. There's the Ashtanga yogis and the karmic yogis. The Ashtanga yogis are the sorcerers, dark workers, Satanists, whatever you want to call them, that they're doing everything for themselves. They're doing all this asana, pranayama, meditation, pratyahara, for their own personal enlightenment so that they can go off and fulfill themselves. And the other side is the karmic yogis who are doing everything so they can get power to help others. But there aren't that many karmic yogis. And you may think you are, but once again I ask, what are you doing? Let's look around the yoga community. Nothing's getting done. We're building more yoga centers and we're supporting corporate yoga schemes and buying $200 yoga pants and doing all these other things. And this whole, and moving, and, and the whole goal is to be able to have a retreat, live in Bali or some far off place where you can go and like just do yoga and, and do nothing else. That's showing that you're an Ashtanga yogi. If you were a karmic yogi, You'd be putting contributions out there. You'd be helping. You'd be doing things. And that's a telltale sign that we're not actually doing anything. Karmic yogis look at the causal factors of suffering and try to eliminate those. Ashtanga yogis maybe will talk about the things at the very top level because that does affect them. But they don't care about everything else. They'll talk about all these things because it will help them get by and help them, you know, you know, just talking about general things, general suffering. That will help them out and help them connect with others so that they can for their own gain. But overall, that does nothing for them. Helping and suffering because they don't care, right? So the real problem with solipsism and not believing in objective reality and not believing that there is a right and a wrong and that there is justice due and people can be wrong is that there's no morals, no truth, and no contribution. I write dystopian fiction. I'll be releasing some yoga dystopia this year, some hopefully get a published book. I'll release some self-published stuff too. But that's all dystopian fiction is, when morals and truth and meaningful contribution go to the, the can. That's like the start of apocal the apocalyptic world building. right? That's what I'm doing currently with my novel right now. There's we've They've lost that, right? Just as we have in our world. If we don't walk away from these systems of control and suffering and look at those causal factors, we're just a bunch of wishy-washy yogis, which we are. What is going on in this community that's actually fighting against these things that cause the suffering that we're trying to end? Yes, we're getting the first layer off. Yes, we're healing our bodies, healing our breath, and healing our mind. But who caused that? Why? Who? Who? Why? Why? Let's go a few layers and talk about that. Let's not tack off this first letter, le level and go right off into the sunset. That's exactly what they want. They want us to tack that off and go say that it's all subjective and nothing matters. And then that's it. That's They're just like hanging us out to dry, actually. That's like one of the best ways to get people not to do something. People who are hungry, poor, and like a little bit not open, they're actually a little, they're more dangerous than someone who's enlightened and doesn't believe in truth. There is a right and a wrong. And ignorance, ignorance is not okay. Yoga is filled with these eternal children. I see it all the time. People who are very close to me have this like syndrome where they are just a part of self-loathing and don't want any personal responsibility. That they think that their family and their, their well-being and all these things are actually higher than truth. And no, I'll be very blunt here that truth is the highest. If you're supporting a system just so you can feed your family that's hurting others and a subversive system to everyone, then you need to get a new job. You know I mean, you need to figure it out. I don't care if you have to feed your family. That's because in the long run, you're hurting others. You're hurting. Like, that's our problem with society. These excuses aren't okay. Because especially as a yogi, you know this. And like I said, a few levels down, and you're maybe in your subconscious, if you don't acknowledge in your conscience every day that you don't like yourself and you're not actually happy, if you're supporting these systems that you know are hurting others and that cause everyone to show up at yoga in the first place, you are not awake. So that's what I'm going to leave it on in this first one, that just talking about general truth and being truthful. 
and that, that the aggregate majority of people aren't open and they, they're letting themselves be enslaved once they open up these first few layers in this community so some solutions you know really ask yourself do you believe in truth and if you believe in truth then can we really dissolve the ego is the ego such a bad thing or are elements of our ego a bad thing if we dissolve the whole ego then there can be no truth we're just floating around like, woo, I'm the same as this microphone. This microphone is I, and I am the microphone. And that's good. Like, that's some deep yoga stuff that's good. But at some level, you need to come out of that and be able to apply those teachings to the real world. Or you're just going to have something I like to call light worker syndrome. I'm releasing that video on my website right now. Some other things on my website, did a whole redesign. There's going to be a few videos, if not daily videos, and accompanying articles a week on like re topics related like this, pretty short, five minutes, and relatively short articles. I release two new ebooks a day, Strength Training for Yoga and 10 Essential Oil Recipes for Yoga. I'm going to be releasing a bunch of physical yoga asana videos and pranayama stuff. Uh, some other paid ebooks are coming on the way. So plus weekly episodes of de Yoga. I have some plans to, I've been talking to some people and hopefully I'm gonna be able to get them on. Maybe hit up some local people we can talk, discuss, maybe find some people who disagree, who don't think the yoga is occulted at all. And we're gonna keep this going, I'm not gonna stop. You can't stop this. I've studied for too long, I've kept myself in the dark for too long, I haven't said these things and it's time to put this out to the world. So. This is the end of episode one of the De Occulting Yoga Podcast. I'm your host, Ian Katnack. Thank you for joining me. Hope you learned a lot. Like, comment, subscribe. See you guys next time. Peace.